Hey guys, I'm Ethan Reed with Lane's Barbecue. I'm here with Ryan Lane today. How's it going? We're gonna be doing the basics of barbecue. Today we're gonna to be focusing on the pork butt. So just so everybody knows, I am brand new at cooking, barbecuing, I know little to nothing. So Which means we can totally ruin you, right? Maybe, yeah. maybe we, quite possible. So I tried to do one by myself and I got confused. As soon as I got to the grocery store, I had to call you and be like, yo, they got shoulders, I like, they got a half round, what do, what do I get? Yeah. So where are we gonna start today? Well, good news, you're starting at the right place. Unless you're harvesting your own animals, the best place to start is a grocery store. What I would say is grocery store or find your lo local butcher. That's really gonna be your best bet. That way you can have someone that you can talk to. You can actually walk in there and say, look, I am new to this. I'm looking for this and can you help me get this? That way, once you've like gotten the process down, you can walk in, usually grab it. Um, but so speaking of pork butts, so typically the way you'll find this is these usually will come two to a pack. So a lot of times people are looking for something that's eight or nine pounds, but what they see is like an 18 pound behemoth. And they're like, oh my gosh, I can never cook it. And so there's a couple names for this. So it's either a pork butt a pork shoulder, so it actually comes from the shoulder of the pig. So now that we have our butt, yep. what's the next step? Uh, so next step is, what you've got is typically on the top of each butt, you've got a fat cap. And so this has probably about a quarter of an inch to maybe a half of an inch of fat on top. What we do, and let me, let me start from, there are so many ways to do barbecue. So what we're gonna talk about today is like our way of doing it. Um, there's a ton of ways you can do it. You can go fat cap up, you can go fat cap down, you can leave all the fat on, you can trim it off. So what we're gonna talk about is why we do what we do. And then the fun thing about it is you can like make it your own. So we'll kind of start from there. Um, but the key to trimming this up is it's gotta be cold. So like what you don't wanna do is a lot of times you'll hear people say, take it out of the fridge, let it come to room temperature before you like cook it before you put it on the smoker. What we want to do is we want it to be ice cold. So you want to pull it out of the fridge, take it out of the package, um, and then start trimming. And the reason why is if you don't, if you wait, what happens is as this starts to warm up, that fat is going to start to melt, that which is going to make it yeah. really tough to actually trim. So what this is, is a boning knife. It's a six inch boning knife. And this is what you really need in order to get the fat off. So if you're doing anything like a butt or a brisket or anything where you're removing fat, you want to go ahead and have that to pull it off. So that'll be on my wish list whenever this I start. This is on your wish list. Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to do the first one and then I'm going to let you get in there. All right. All right. All right. So all we're going to do is, I don't know if you guys can see this, but we're just, you can see where the meat and the fat start. We're just going to take the knife and run it up under. That way you can fold it back. And so we're actually gonna remove a really big chunk of this fat. Maybe leave just a little bit of fat on there. Okay. The reason why we do that is we're gonna season it, right? Right. And so a lot of people, once this fat like cooks and breaks down, it's still pretty fatty. And so what we'll do is we'll actually pull the majority of that off so we can season underneath it. So the bark that we create when we smoke, and we'll talk about bark in just a little bit. Okay. Um, is actually what you're gonna eat. Gotcha. So a lot of times if you leave a huge fat piece on there and you season this, then you're gonna have some delicious fat, right? But then Do when you pull fat. it back underneath in that meat, you're gonna lose all that bark that you had, all right? So we trim it like this and then that way you can kind of come across. All right, so I've kind of got it started for okay. you. Now you can kind of take it on. All right. And so you want to just stay up. So if you see this, so I've actually got a little bit too much of the meat. Okay. Um, but when we cook this one, we'll blame it on you since it's your oh, first good. time. Good. Ah. People at home can see my mistake. Does that look right? Yeah. Oh, it doesn't have to be perfect. So you could actually cut that whole piece off. You know what I mean? There you go. And then start fresh. There you go. This we just toss away. I want to keep that as a souvenir. Yeah. So stay up a little. There you go. So 
So a lot of people always ask, do you cook fat cap up or fat cap down? The way that we actually cook, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So we're gonna cut the majority of that fat cap off so it takes a lot of the arguing right out of it. Nice. So about when am I looking to be done with this fat cap? Uh, so you're, you're close. So this right here, and we can kind of talk about this piece. So I always get all the fat off of this. If you leave a little bit over here, that's okay. You still want, so you've still got a pretty decent okay. chunk here. But this is the money muscle right here. Oh, the money muscle. Yeah, so the money muscle. So if you keep a little bit there, you'll be okay. Okay. You're good right there. Right there. Yep, so I would just take a little bit more off right there, and then you'll be good. All right. So I don't, also don't want you to cut your arm. So what I would say is here. How would on. you go about? So here, what I would do is just take it, if okay. you can just get a little bit. And then you always want to kind of cut away from you. So if you can kind of take it like this. There you go. Then you're good. All right. So that is... That's done. Trimmed, yes. The beauty of a pork butt is, and I always tell people, in, in barbecue when you're starting off, butts or chickens are always the greatest thing to start with. So this right here, if you just kind of follow a couple simple steps, it's super easy to do. It's really hard to mess up. Um, the key is consistent temp and consistent time. So like when I say, a lot of people ask, how long is this gonna take to cook? Well, the truth is, like, it's kind of hard to say. Every butt's different. Like, where you're cooking, what you're cooking on, there's a lot of different things. You could have a ceramic grill, such as like a Kamado Joe or a Big Green Egg. You could have a pellet smoker, like a Rectech or a Traeger. Um, or, you know what? You can even do it in your oven. All right, so there's, there's a, if you don't have it, what I would say is don't not cook because you don't have the proper, what you perceive to be the proper utensil to do it. Right. So there's always ways that you can make meat that aren't necessarily traditional, but they still turn out delicious. All right, so when do we get to season this thing? Oh uh, man, now's the time. So we've got a couple seasonings that we put out. Me, being a fat kid, I tend to like sugar <laughs> in All my right. seasoning. So um, we've got kind of like where we started, Sweet Heat was one of our first rubs, so it's gonna provide a little sweetness and a little heat Love from the heat. sriracha powder. Yeah. Uh, we've got Kunami, which actually uses like a, a turbinado or a demerara sugar, so it's actually got like a little crunch to it and provides a nice bark. That sounds really uh, fancy. And then Spellbound, which is kind of like our- Spellbound's my favorite. Man, this is, so this is a rub, you guys might have heard of it, it was Magic Dust before uh, we had to switch the name, <laughs> we won't get into that, but um, this is actually a nice blend of a little sweetness, savory, and like a little smoky. We use this smoked paprika, which kind of gives it a nice little the best, smoke to it. Um, this actually, I love the way it sits on the meat. I think pork, for me, I love having a little sugar mm -hmm. in it. Um, we'll talk about that when we pull it too. We might add a little bit more goodness in there. Um, so today I'm going to let you kind of season this thing up. What okay. I usually do is there's a couple ways. So a, a lot of times, I don't know if you've heard like a binder, like some people use like an oil or a mustard okay. or something like that. A lot of times what they'll do that for is just so the rub sticks. Right. Right. Well, we want to sell a lot of rubs, so don't <laughs> use it. That way it just kind of falls everywhere. Falls everywhere. But usually when you pull these butts out of the twin pack, there's some liquid that they've kind of been sitting in there, which will provide that moisture. Right. This one, since we pulled the other one out last night to cook it overnight, this one's kind of been sitting in the fridge, so it's dry. Okay, so we so, sh probably should add a binder to I this. I would add thing. a binder to this one, yeah, okay. absolutely. So it's not really gonna do anything for the cooking process. Right. It's really just to apply some moisture to the meat, so that rub six. So that rub really yep. holds on, got it. Um, what I would do is, so the way we smoke them is, I was talking before about fat cap up or fat cap down. Right. Um, we actually smoke it, even though we've cut the majority of the cap off, we're gonna smoke it what we would still consider fat cap up. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it. The reason why we do that is because a lot of times that fat, when it's turned upside down and sitting on the grates, depending on where the heat source is coming from, right. it can kind of get like gummy and okay. it doesn't give the best all around bark. Whereas I found on this side, oh yeah, 
it's still pretty lean. You've got the, the muscle and the fat kind of running through it, but for the most part, it's still pretty lean. And so it sits really nice on the grate and it doesn't like gum up and kind of fall through. So what I would do is because we're cooking fat side up, I would always start seasoning on the bottom. And the reason why is you wanna go ahead and season that, then you can season your sides, then you flip it over to the top part. Here, got a little, oh gosh. little straggling. Um, flip it over to the top part, that way your seasoning on top that's gonna actually show and sit up got isn't it. gonna be affected. So we're ready to season the bottom of this. Yep, so here's the thing, so good job. So what you always wanna make sure is you've got two gloves, right? So always. we wanna keep one dirty, okay. like one dirty, one clean. That way, if you're grabbing different rubs, if you're grabbing the olive oil, if you're grabbing whatever, you've always got a clean hand to kind of work with. Right. All right. Nice. All right. So do we want to add some on here? Right, first? we do. So all I would say is just like a light layer and you're going to rub it with your left hand. Oh God. And it doesn't have to be like, I know you're getting into it, but like, it doesn't have to be, you know, super long process. <laughs> all right. Is that look about right? I'm yeah. not enjoying this as much as you think I'm enjoying it. That's not what the camera's showing. Okay, so <laughs> that's it. All you're doing is just apply, applying a little bit of moisture. Okay. Right? Maybe I so, don't enjoy it. I know. That butt's going to charge you soon. All right. <laughs> All right. And then always, so is when you're seasoning, always like this so the camera sees. Yeah, the product right? placement, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, absolutely. And then you just want to like kind of shake it out. So the key is it's all in the wrist. The and remember, I've got two kids. Put through school? Put them through school, that's, that's right. right. So the more so that you can use, the better. So now that this is seasoned, should I do that first yep. or the top? Okay. Yeah. Oh, really at the end of the day, you just want to make sure you're seasoning the top last. Got it. All right, so today we used our Spellbound Rub to season it, which, which has that sugar in there. But if you're looking right. for something that's actually a sugar-free option, so our Signature Rub was our first rub we ever came out with. It's an all-purpose seasoning no sugar, it's got awesome flavor, great color, provides an awesome bark. Um, so that could be another option as well. Right. All right, you ready to throw this thing on the grill? Let's get it on smoke. So now that we're out here at the smoker, yeah. what is our, what's our step? What are we doing next? Well, there's a couple different things. So first we've got the smoker set at 275 degrees. Um, quick steps, make sure you got power. So if you're cooking on a pellet style grill, we're cooking on our Rectech RT700 today. Make sure your hopper is filled with pellets last thing you want to do is run out of pellets during your cook. If you're cooking on a ceramic grill, make sure your basket is completely full of charcoal uh, so you don't run out. The last thing you want to do is have to stop, reload, get your fire going again, and you know you don't want to interrupt the smoke. That makes sense. Uh, so we're cooking at 275 degrees. There's a couple different ways you can do it. You could go low and slow. You could go hot and fast. What we've actually found is kind of like that middle middle ground right on so uh, is that just from years of you yeah i think about? honestly that and like if you don't want to kind of watch it overnight like this is something you could wake up early in the morning say like five or six put it on it's going to be an eight to nine hour cook and then you still can enjoy it with your family at night nice all right all right um, so we've got it at 275. Uh, we've got our bud. It's all seasoned up. Let's go ahead Looking and get good. it on and then I can kind of answer any other questions you have. Let's do it. So does it matter where we're placing this on our grill or? Well, I think ultimately it depends on how many you're cooking, right? So we're just cooking one. So some grills you'll find will have hot spots. So it could be close to the firebox. It could be on the other side. I figure since we're just doing one, let's just put it right in the middle. Right on. Be easy. All right, so it is on. Now the key is to not keep lifting the lid and looking at it, right? That's so hard. we're using a piece of equipment that gives us that set it and forget it. It's super easy to use. So like, let's take advantage of that. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna keep this on the smoker until the internal temp is about 180. It'll take maybe six and a half to seven hours. Then we'll pull it off and we're gonna wrap it. All right. So how often do you come out and check the internal temperature of your butt? So I'm not going to. I'm gonna let okay. it sit on there for about six, six and a half hours before we actually do that. Gotcha. Um, and so that way you've got the, the lid closed, your smoke's in there, your bark's gonna be able to form. Um, and then we'll actually pull it off. We're gonna wrap it. Um, and then we'll, we'll put it back on until it reaches the internal temp of 202.
So we've got some light brown sugar and some apple cider vinegar. So these are both great flavors. They're big barbecue flavors. We use right. them both in a lot of our sauces. Um, and so we are gonna take maybe about one butt, I would say maybe about a half a cup, quarter cup to a half a cup of apple cider vinegar. Okay. And then about a half a cup of brown sugar. And so the cool thing is, is that brown sugar, as we put this in, we're gonna pull that hot meat on top of it. Ooh. And it's actually gonna melt that brown sugar. And then in case, say you're cooking for three or four people, right? And you guys don't eat the whole butt there's gonna be a lot of that extra moisture already in there. So when you go to heat it up the next day, it's gonna be perfect. Right on. All right, are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. We're gonna open it up. Let me see that steam. All right. Would you say here's that's a hot test. butt? Here's a hot butt, hot butt. <laughs> I don't know if I would, but you know, maybe now it's on video. So All I right. guess you would. I would. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Barbecue. It's always awkward, right? All right. Here we go. So the key is, so as you can see, bones clean, starting to come out. Okay. What I do is kind of go ahead and pull that out first. Oh, it comes right out. So that's also why we let it rest. That bone is super clean. Mm -hmm. You can see the steam coming off of it. We didn't talk about this before, but when you're picking out the butt, always try to get one with the bone in. Okay. So you can get them where the butcher has already removed the bone. But what happens is in order for them to get that out, they're cutting the butt in a couple different places. And so what's gonna happen is when that bone's out, you're gonna have meat that's just gonna kind of flop around. Right. And you might have to tie it up. So this will keep it super clean, plus it's gonna impart a lot of flavor. Right. All right. So this, this brown part right here, in the business you call that bark? That's bark. That's absolutely right. So basically what we've done is that seasoning that we've added to the outside is actually helped form that bark on that butt. That looks beautiful. And so a lot of times people think, oh my gosh, you burned it. No, actually bark is the flavor. Right. Yep. Cool. All right. All right so there's a couple different ways you can get into it. Um, you can kind of just pull pieces apart. See, this is what I was talking about earlier too. Since we seasoned, we pulled some of that fat off there. Mm-hmm. Look, now you can actually pull this off and eat this whole piece instead of like kind of diving into a big old chunk of fat. Right. All right. So I'll, I'll start, I'll kind of pull a little bit and then you can kind of dive in and get All the right. rest. So there is a lot of times a piece of cartilage on these butts. So it's not on every single one, but you want to make sure you get it. All right. So all we're going to do is pull this apart. You can kind of pull it how you want to. Notice everything's just falling apart. Awesome. If you want, uh, you could chop this if you want it a lot finer. Right. Um, or I kind of like a rough, a rough pull. I think it makes for a great sandwich. So I would say when you get in this part right over here, just continue to check for that cartilage in case there is a piece you in sure there. Sure, it's not in there. Yep. Does that look right? Hey, man, it's your butt. <laughs> But see, if you were trying to do this about two hours ago, when it was about 200 degrees on the inside, like it would melt your hands. I mean, it's still kind of steaming my yeah. hands a little. It's going to stay hot for hours. You can put it in the cooler and three, four hours later, it's still going to be in that 160, 165 range. Man, it smells so good. So there's a couple pieces you might have in here, like this right here, which is a little gristly. Mm -hmm. You kind of pull that out. Go that to the side. Yep. And really, if you took your hand and just squeezed it, what's gonna happen? Like, it'll just kinda, oh, well, oh, oh. like, and it just kinda breaks apart. So that's what we're looking for. Yep. That shows just how tender it is. <gasps> See? And this thing it's has so, actually been sitting for a couple high. hours. <laughs> all right, so here's what I would say. Let's pretend that we got it all pulled. Yep. What we're gonna do is we've got the brown sugar under there. We've got the apple cider vinegar. Um, look at that smoke ring on there too mm. looks fantastic so you kind of see the different color so right. that's the ring from that wood mm. um, then what i do is always add a little bit more seasoning just so you get the bark but then you get all that flavor right. on the inside too and we got kids yeah. that's that's right and so this way it stays really moist 
uh, especially if you're not eating it for an hour or so. Mm -hmm. um, and so look, all that vinegar has kind of soaked up. All that sugar has melted. That smells amazing. Like all you need is a bun, a tortilla, and just your hand and you just go Shoot after it, man. Yeah, man. This is it, right? Test it, yep. So everything going in from trimming to seasoning to cooking to resting. It's all led to this moment. That's right. All right. I've Tell actually got a little bit of mustard sauce on here. So I love like that vinegar. We have a vinegary kick. So the mustard, the vinegar, little sweetness. And that's the Lane's Barbecue Southbound. Yes, right. That's right. All right. Here we go. Let's do it. All right. How'd it turn out? Bro. Is that legit? You got it. Love me a butt. <laughs> <laughs> Love me a butt. Now that you've made it awkward. <laughs> In all seriousness though, man, that was fantastic. So I hope you learned a lot. Man, thank you so much. That was so much fun. Man, thank you guys so much for clicking on another video. We hope that it uh, informs you as much as it did me. Um, thank you so much for walking us through that again, man. You're absolutely welcome, man. Man, we're excited for the next one. Hey. Cheers. Cheers. Like the Bye. video, subscribe. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments, and hey, keep experimenting. Keep experimenting.